Welcome to the P. Buckley Moss Museum, located in Waynesboro, Virginia, at the heart of the Shenandoah Valley. The virtual tour you are about to experience celebrates the life and art of one of America's most inspiring and popular artists, Patricia Buckley Moss. In 1989, Charles Kuralt of CBS News called Pat the people's artist, a reference to Pat's ability to communicate through her art with many people on many levels. That same year, on May 12th, the P. Buckley Moss Museum opened, and since then, thousands of visitors have come to view Pat's work. Through her art, her enthusiasm, her positive outlook, and her ability to communicate to all people, Pat Moss continues to write her own phenomenal story. As you open the maroon door and enter the museum, you are surrounded by the world of P. Buckley Moss, a constantly evolving world, a world in which Pat continues to expand her horizons and artistic creations. Our tour begins in the foyer of the museum where some of Pat's larger works are displayed. The museum has three floors. The main floor is home to the permanent collection and retrospective of Pat's art and life. The upper floor contains the Virginia collection, religious works, oil paintings, and etchings. On the lower level, there is the dollhouse, and a sales gallery where many of Pat's prints, originals, etchings, and other gift items are available. Let's begin by touring the main gallery. Many of the paintings in the gallery are older works that help tell the story of a young Pat Buckley and her journey to become the highly skilled, professionally trained artist we know as P. Buckley Moss. In parochial school, a nun realized that while Pat was not learning to read, she did have a talent for drawing. Accolades were never for academic achievement, but always for her art. Billy Mean Goat was written and illustrated by Pat during her Washington Irving years. The story is about a boy named Danny, who meets a cantankerous goat named Billy Mean Goat, the two become fast friends and spend time playing in the forest. Pat was already creating her own stylized figures. In 1951, Pat was accepted and received a full scholarship to the Cooper Union. There she studied fine arts and graphic design for four years. As her senior project at the Cooper Union, Pat was to read and translate a book creating an illuminated manuscript with the traditional materials and methods of the early medieval manuscript painters. Pat's creation, the illuminated manuscript entitled St. Thomas Aquinas's Book of Man, is considered one of the most important works in the collection. From the pigment in the illustrations to the making of the paper and binding of the book, this artistic creation is entirely handmade. Pat was only 22 years old when she created the illuminated manuscript, which is now considered by many to be a masterpiece. The importance of the painting boats cannot be overstated. Pat began the painting in Port Arthur, Texas, and after moving to Virginia, reworked it. She then entered it into the Virginia Museum's Waynesboro Chapter Art Show. The story goes that Pat had noticed at previous art shows that many of the men were winning. She chose to enter this painting simply as P. Buckley Moss and won first prize. It was this painting, Boats, that helped further her career. But it also defined her as P. Buckley Moss artist. Pat first met the Amish and Mennonite people of the Shenandoah Valley after the move to the town of Waynesboro, Virginia. The Shenandoah Valley and its people influenced Pat's work to such an extent that she began to paint in a different manner. Though she continued to use a modernist style in many of her images, a change began to take place. Images like Rachel and Jacob, Sugar Valley Farm, 
and Lords of the Realm are all good examples of Pat's early valley-style images. Pat's architectural renderings have a large collector base, particularly among those interested in historical or national landmarks. Natural Bridge, described as one of the seven natural wonders of the world, is in Rockbridge County, Virginia. Thomas Jefferson purchased 157 acres, including the Natural Bridge, in 1754 from King George III. Pat painted a romantic version of this landmark. This painting is one of a series of four natural landmarks created for WVPT. The other three paintings in the series include Natural Chimneys, Appalachian Trail, and Luray Caverns. In 2002, Pat decided to paint the home of America's first couple, George and Martha Washington. Pat captures the stately essence in this detailed representation of what is known as the Mansion House Farm. Mount Vernon is a recent addition to the main floor collection. It has been a favorite painting among collectors. Like the historic landmarks Pat has painted of America, she has painted historic buildings and locations throughout Italy. One of them, Ponte Vecchio, is one of the oldest and most famous bridges in Italy and one of her favorite subjects. The Red Bike is an allegory for Pat and her sister Mary, called Honey, riding a red tricycle. The original watercolor was inspired by a photograph taken in 1937 of a young Pat Buckley and her sister. The photo shows Mary driving the bike with Pat behind her. In the painting, however, Pat has painted herself as a boy and often refers to herself as a tomboy. Stone House, printed in 1986, is a dry point etching. Dry point etchings are engravings made with a steel or a jeweled point stylus called an etching needle. This is pressed directly into a metal plate from which the prints are made. Gaggle of Geese, printed in 1982, is a superb example of a serigraph or silk screen. This type of printmaking involves a stencil process whereby ink is forced through a fine silk-like mesh. The reading lesson is a rare image in which Pat combines calligraphy and image in a typical classroom scene. There is some irony in the reading lesson when the artist is dyslexic and has struggled for years with reading. Suffer Them to Come to Me is Pat's tribute to the victims and families that suffered indescribable losses during the terrorist attacks on the Twin Towers, September the 11th, 2001. Of this painting, she says, Suffer Them to Come to Me is my very personal reaction to the events of September 11th, 2001. The act of painting the disaster helped me to work through my emotions and come to terms with reality. This painting pays tribute to the heroes who died to save the world. Joe Waterbury created a traveling dollhouse built to scale, three inches to a foot. When the Moss Museum opened in 1989, Joe built a house to fit under the staircase. Visitors to the museum may amuse themselves by finding and counting the glass and wooden mice hidden in nearly every room of the house. The exact number of mice in the house changes from day to day. Once the mice are counted, the visitor is presented with a sticker that says, I counted all the mice in the P. Buckley Moss dollhouse. This has been an abridged tour of the P. Buckley Moss Museum. For a complete personal tour, please visit the P. Buckley Moss Museum at 150 P. Buckley Moss Drive in Waynesboro, Virginia. For large groups or children's tours, please call for reservations. If you are not interested in a formal tour, you may tour the collection using the self-guided tour book or browse on your own. Admission to the museum is free. For more information, call 800-343-8643 or on the web at www.pbuckleymoss.com.